Hi guys, welcome back to another Overthrow Disc Golf video. It is, for most of you, off-season time. So we're gonna be dropping a bunch of drills that I'm using in my lessons. And we're also going to revisit some of the old drills and dig a little deeper. So today, Twirly Bird 2.0. So the original twirly bird, just by way of reminder, looked like this. There's a lot of this, and then you just basically let the arm collapse in through, and it was all up here. The goal of that was to learn how to coil the upper body, how to swing that upper body back against this lower body. And that was the whole purpose of the video. It served that purpose for a lot of you, and a lot of you found the channel through that video. Um, thanks for being here, by the way. It means a lot to us but it only addressed that one part of the throw. We're going to build on it to address another part of the throw, tilt, today, and we'll give you Twirly Bird 2.0. It's gonna be very simple, but um, things I want you to be aware of as you go through this. Footwork as part of Twirly Bird land here is one of the things that is easily compromised because as we do all this twisting, it's easy to get the lower body twisting and untwisting in weird, unnatural ways since we're not building up momentum this way with the legs. So it's easy to have this last open up here with the lower body, which is not the point of the drill um, to teach that. So be aware that in all of your coiling glory, the footwork is not going to be great. The purpose of that drill was only coiling of the upper body, learning that. That's one thing to be aware of. The other thing to be aware of is that this totally open angle here where you can see all the way down the line isn't something that really happens during the throw. Thus, we filled the gap on that with box drill, box drill 2.0 coming up in a later video. But yeah, this doesn't really happen. It's just good to get the rotation and a nice backswing happening. So be aware of those two things. Now let's add the tilt. Now, if you do the original twirly bird, you might notice that the swing plane is very flat like this. And if you've been paying attention to the channel, you'll know that we don't really want a flat swing plane. We want to be able to have our shoulders swing up for the most part throughout the throw. Twirly bird came out very flat. And since we're going this way, flat is easy, but misses to the right and to the left, also very easy. What we want to learn how to do is we want to tilt it and if I tilt the swing plane here at the waist, and then I do this twirly bird, looks very similar to Niklas. Shout out to all you Finland peeps out there. Love you guys. Very similar to what Niklas was doing when he started carving up everything the last couple of tournaments. It's a tilted rotation. So we got the rotation from the upper body. Now we tilt it and we can swing up and we can create lots of space in the throw. Also making it so when we approach this way, it's much easier to stay on your line from a horizontal perspective, left to right. Boom. Okay. So now I need to throw it. This happens like literally every time. Well, I guess this would be a really good time to talk about the sponsor of today's video. Always using this thing. Today's sponsor is Rogue Iron Disc Golf. A while back, they sent it like months and months ago, they sent us one of their disc golf retrievers. They got a bunch of stuff on their site but I feel like this is their flagship item for me personally. This thing is held up, super sturdy. It fits in my Squatch bag, and uh, I use this attachment because I get stuff lost in trees all the time. They also have three other attachments, like a water attachment, two-pronged here, if you lose stuff in water all the time, and you can swap it out. I prefer to keep this one because I lose stuff in trees way more often than I do water. Not to mention, at least once around, Mikey or Dakota are saying, Josh, do you have your little grabber thing? Can I use your little grabber thing? Because it just comes in handy that much. So check out their website. Again, it's just one of those things, it's like you gotta have a retriever in your bag. So Twirly Bird 2.0, 
very simply. Same thing here will be tilted and now here. And we want the shoulders to clear all the way back. We want the chest to start going back, but the disc is gonna stay out away from our body. Whereas Twirly Bird 1.0, it was very easy to get the disc back here. And now we're trapping it behind us, collapsing the pocket in some cases, AKA rounding. So here, and we work our swings this way. And then eventually you can let it come in and sling out. One of the bad habits that can be formed here is a huge wide left arm if you practice a lot. You can fix that by just tucking here and throw that way. Here it is with a little bit of tilt. And you get a nice high finish with the hand. So starting low, finishing high with the hand. Really nice. And of course we gotta do one with a walk up. So when you do it with a tilt, it's more of a pendulum style swing like this. It just sounded good. It's yeah, very. It did. Ew. And it's okay in the beginning when you're practicing this to throw hyzers. Don't be afraid of throwing the hyzer for a little bit. Again, we're just working on shoulder coil and good tilt. You can learn how to adjust that angle later. That is some amendments to Twirly Bird 1.0. As you practice your shoulder coil, hope you'll keep these things in mind. keep them in mind. <laughs> Peace out, fam. <laughs>